From the University of Alaska Anchorage, this is Seawolf Voices, a podcast about the pathways to and from education. I'm your host, Matt Jarden. Responding to the drastic reductions in the University of Alaska System's state-funded budget, the Board of Regents voted in September 2020 to discontinue UAA's hockey, gymnastics, and alpine skiing programs, unless the teams could successfully raise two years of funding to cover operating expenses. With gymnastics and alpine skiing meeting their goals, eyes are now on Seawolf Hockey, which has so far raised $2.59 million of its $3 million goal ahead of the August 30th deadline. In addition to a recent upswell of support from the likes of the NHL Seattle Kraken team, two former Seawolf Hockey teammates, Brian Crafty Craft, marketing alumnus and the owner of two Alaska fishing lodges, as well as Steve Bogie Bogoyevec, who studied business management and real estate and is the senior managing director of a California real estate investment firm, have each donated $50,000 to save Seawolf Hockey. They are encouraging other UAA alumni to contribute, offering to match donations up to another $50,000. In this episode, Brian and Steve talk about how they arrived in Alaska from Chicago and California respectively, how their time playing hockey at UAA has impacted their lives today, and why they think it's important to continue paying it forward. Brian and Steve, welcome to Seawolf Voices. It's great to have you both on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for having me as well. I'm excited to be here. I'd like to jump in with the reason we're talking today, the news about the UAA hockey program. What was going through your minds when you first heard that it was slated for discontinuation? I, I was really taken aback by it. I was somewhat blindsided. I uh, had no idea. There was no warning or uh, rumblings that, hey, the program might be in trouble. Uh, we knew that the university had uh, tight financial situations, but uh, we had not had any kind of warning. The community has obviously reached out tremendously, and there's a strong willingness to participate and help this program along, and a recognition that strong athletic program at a university, not just hockey, but a strong athletic program overall is essential to a recognizable university. It brings name, brings recognition, and it brings a culture to a community like Anchorage. To be honest, after I finished my college career and then, you know, kind of a short stint of minor league professional career, I was pretty distant from, from hockey and the university. And so when I had learned about uh, what was happening, you know, similar to the crafty, I was just completely blindsided, totally shocked, and was just ready to, you know, to, to roll up the sleeves and put the boots on and do whatever, you know, I could, you know, in my, in my capabilities to, uh, to help solve this, this, uh, this challenge that we have, uh, as, you know, as has uh, crafty. And, you know, I, again, I just, uh, I can't believe we're in the, in, in the situation that we're in, but I do, you know, have a strong belief that we're going to pull this off. We've got a great group of people that are alumni that are really working hard to round up this money and not just, you know, this raise that, that everyone's trying to get, but future down the road and, and for, for many years to come that are going to want to participate and will participate and will be bringing other people in to participate to, uh, to keep this, this program alive and strong for, uh, for years to come. Going even further back, can you tell me how you both started playing hockey and why you chose to play for UAA? Yeah, started playing hockey. I remember, remember it was my dad where I grew up in Chicago and my dad sat me down at the kitchen table one time and I was young. And it's one of the first memories I have as a real young uh, child. I was four years old and my dad saw an advertisement in the newspaper about uh, for kids hockey. And so we went to the rink and I started playing hockey then and quickly fell in love with it. And my journey to Alaska took many detours uh, to get there. But fortunately, you know, as you get older and you find out that things all happen for a reason, there was definitely a reason that I ended up in Alaska. And at the time when I made some real boneheaded decisions and maybe got myself into situations that caused change to happen, such as coaches telling me to 
not be on their team anymore. Uh, I, it all happened for the reason. And I ended up in Alaska after going one year to Northern Michigan University. And I reached out to a couple of my buddies, Derek Donald, a uh, you know, dear friend of Bogey and, and mine, a teammate of ours. He was coming up to the University of Alaska Anchorage. Our uh, head coach from Dubuque, where we played juniors at, was Mark Ostapina. He was now the assistant coach here in Alaska. And so it became a, a top option for me to come up here. I was also looking at University of Wisconsin. They had showed some interest. Uh, Donnie Granado was my uh, best friend growing up in Chicago, and he was uh, playing there. And so, you know, he was trying to bring me over there as well. But ultimately, what really tipped it was the fact that I did have to sit out a year. When you transfer Division One school to Division One school, you have to sit out a year. And so I knew I was going to have to sit out and not participate. And that was going to be a grueling season for me. But Coach Ostapina found out an opportunity for me to play with the senior amateur team, which at the time was the Fairbanks Gold Kings, which was a prelude to what ended up becoming the Alaska Gold Kings and the Anchorage Aces uh, big rivalry. So that made it real easy for me to transfer up here, practice with the boys uh, at, at the university, and then go up on the weekends and play real competitive games up in Fairbanks and then um, be ready to play the, the following year. So. I was born in Hollywood, California, back in 1968. That was hockey was not really a um, prominent sport in, in Southern California. Uh, but my dad was born and raised in Detroit. And, um, you know, the Kings had just come to Los Angeles. And my dad became a season seat holder, being a big hockey fan. And similar to Crafty at age four, my dad put me on skates and kind of a, you know, a learn to skate, learn to play uh, program. In, uh, in the Topanga Plaza Mall. And I just fell in love with the game and you know, was really fortunate to come through some good coaching in California. There wasn't much competition you know, growing up, uh, but I ended up with a coach that he was from uh, Vancouver and had come to California to, um, to work for Hanna-Barbera. And he started dating one of the, the moms on our team. And so he became the coach and during that period of time, he uh, had 11 of us that ended up with Division I college scholarships and, uh, and, and drafted in the National Hockey League. So there's you know, one guy by the name of Jack White that just uh, you know, was really uh, integral in, in you know, me kind of getting to the next stage, uh, which you know, my, I had a, you know, a lifelong goal and dream of being you know, a college hockey player. And uh, I played a couple of years of junior hockey in, in the Midwest in the USHL. And coming out of that, I didn't really have a lot of options in the Division One realm of where I was going to go. Similar to Brian, Wisconsin was looking at me and a couple other schools. I had somewhat committed to a Division Three school. Um, and I spent my summer prior to uh, coming to UAA in um, Minnesota Hockey School uh, working. And right near the end of the camp or the summer, uh, I got a call from, uh, from Mark Ostapina and Coach Brosh. And the way that back in the day, you know, everything was on a pay phone, right? So I was, I was given this message to call these coaches back from the University of Alaska. And I thought someone was pranking me. And so I didn't call them. And they called back a day later and left me another message. And I still thought someone was pranking me. But at that point, I was like, I might as well make the call. And so I made the call. And, and sure enough, I was given an opportunity to come to UAA. And literally a week later, I drove from Minnesota to Alaska, uh, not even really knowing what I was getting myself into. I did know some of the players. I knew of Crafty and I knew of Derek Donald. And and a few other guys and uh got into alaska and you know that's all she wrote it was uh it was you know crafty said something everything happens for a reason and uh that was one of my my dad's favorite sayings and i've got it actually tattooed on my body and uh everything does happen for a reason and it's you know it's an amazing four-year college career for me there needless to say hockey wasn't the only thing you were both doing at uaa can you please tell me about the degrees you were both pursuing while at UAA and how those led to your current lines of work? I picked a business uh, 
uh, degree just because I, I knew I wanted to go into business. Uh, growing up in Chicago, I kind of figured I'd be working down at the Chicago Board of Exchange. It used to be called the Mercantile Exchange. Figured I'd be working down there doing something in the city. But, uh, you know, once I got to Alaska, there was a lot of business opportunities in Alaska for a young person. So I just figured that a, a degree in business was a, a general degree. I didn't really want to gravitate towards something specific, you know, like engineering or biology or something like that. So business just seemed a natural and it prepared me in a broader sense for what I do now. I own fishing lodges now in Alaska and there is definitely a, a marketing component and there is definitely a, you know, you're running a business. And so, you know, the university prepared me on a macro level. And then once you get into the specifics of owning a business or operating a business, you get down into the micro aspects of it. So the university did a, I, I, I think I had a great experience at the university. I got a good education, um, got a solid degree that provided me opportunities to do what I'm doing today. Yeah, and for me, you know, when I when I first uh, kind of entered into college, I wasn't really sure, you know, what kind of direction I wanted to go into. You know, I was probably a, an average, you know, high school student at best, and I did have a tendency to be entrepreneurial just by nature. Like I uh, get excited about being entrepreneurial and doing stuff like that, and so maybe similar to, to Crafty, you know, business management was uh, didn't pigeonhole me into anything and really gave me kind of a platform for, you know, what was to come. And uh, I did find some interest in real estate finance, uh, which I, you know, I took some courses and, and had to minor in, in, in real estate finance. And, and coming out of college, you know, I played a few years of, uh, in the minors and did some entrepreneurial stuff on the side, starting, you know, hockey schools and camps and, and different things like that. And then when I uh, retired, I went to work for the LA Kings um, in their front office for a few years. And it was a great time. Uh, I got to do a lot of giving back to the sport um, in Southern California, uh, which uh, was very gratifying, but it just wasn't totally fulfilling. And so uh, I launched into uh, the real estate business, the real estate investment business, and started uh, the Bogey Group, which is a part of Marcus Millichap. And um, I do believe that the, the platform of business management and having, you know, a little bit of understanding of real estate finance uh, coming out of college really prepared me for what I'm doing today. I've been with uh, this firm for 18 years now, and now I feel very gratified and, and fulfilled at the same time. So I, I always say that the real estate business is a lot like, a lot like hockey. It's a contact sport. And when I say that uh, on the real estate side, it's contacting people and, and meeting people um, and getting to know people and, and figuring out how you can you know, better position them uh, in life and, and finances and, and the ups and downs. In real estate, you know, you can come out of the gate and things are going great. The transaction, all of a sudden something happens and it's like getting down a goal or two and you got to figure out how you're going to get back on, you know, back to even and how to win the game. And so, you know, I think between the education and and hockey really prepared me for the business that I that I run today. That's actually a perfect segue into my next question. How has your time with Seawolf Hockey and UAA impacted your life today? To answer that question, I think you always think, oh, well, you know, being in sports and winning is, that's the biggest thing, right? Everyone's trying to win the championship or whatever it may be. And though that is the case and the goal of everybody I think the things that you remember most are times with the guys and, and being on road trips and, you know, the funny pranks that guys do to each other and the relationships that you build, you know, over a four year period where you're with these guys, you know, whether it's, you know, in the dorms, the locker room or the classroom, it's like 24 seven. And, uh, you know, the relationships that, that get built are for sure the things that, that I remember most. Yeah, there's there's a game or two I can tell you some details, and they were awesome. But really, when it comes down to it, you know, it's the relationships and and you know, seeing just seeing Crafty on you know a Zoom call right now is like chills up my back because it's like I haven't had you know I haven't seen him in a long time, but it's like like literally we could have had the same conversation that we were finishing from 
20 years ago. So it, it's just really incredible how the bonds between the players and, and coaching staff and pretty amazing to me. And that's, that's the stuff that I remember the most. Well, yeah, it, you know, S Steve said it very clearly is that the bonds that you develop, that we developed as teammates and friends, you know, you, you, you got 28 guys on, on a roster. You're not going to get along with everyone, but we all pulled together for a common goal. And whenever you have that kind of energy and that kind of commitment that we had and being an independent organization in, in hockey and in college hockey at that time and to accomplish what we did was, you know, something that, as Steve said, you might not remember every single game. And in fact, USA hockey uh, had called and was going through a bunch of uh, past history with me and, the guy was saying, and then you went into Boston and you did this, or then you went into uh, Ohio State and did, you know, had this game. And we're like, I, I was like, you know, I, it's all a blur. But what I do remember is the accomplishments that we made. I certainly remember, you know, bogeys wraparound goals in, in consecutive years. UA hockey and the memories that we created together uh, live with me every day. I don't think there is a day that goes by that I don't think about something or somebody that had a connection with UA hockey, whether it's thinking about sending a text to Derek or to Larson or Rob Kahn or whoever, or, or to Bogues, or sitting here late night one night and getting everybody on a group text and sharing 80s hairband rock music songs that we used to listen to together. But you know, the memories of, of being on a team like that are irreplaceable. You, you can't do it, you can't duplicate it anywhere you know in business yeah you, you've got a team and you pull together and you have that but what we did at, at UAA and the hockey program was something really special and I think of those players that aren't with us you know Jeff Batters that isn't with us anymore all those memories stay with us and it's it was something really special. Why have you decided to donate to Save Seawolf Hockey? I decided to donate to Seawolf Hockey and, you know, Bogues and I have matched each other and we're, we're challenging other uh, alumni, not just hockey, but all University of Alaska Anchorage uh, alumni to donate and we're going to match what they donate up to $50,000. So in my, my view, I decided to donate because it was my way to give back. The university gave me something. It gave me something very special. Yeah, we got a degree out of it. And that was a two-way street. You know, we participated, played in sports, brought attention to the program. But we did that because we loved the sport we played in. We loved our teammates and we loved uh, our, our team. And so this is my way of giving back to the university for giving me the opportunity to live the life that I do. I'm fortunate. I'm very, very fortunate to do what I do. I've been given opportunities that a lot of people weren't there has been a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication but at the same time I wouldn't have had this opportunity had the university not allowed me to come up here and play so it's my opportunity to give back to the program secondly I think it's important for the community community without a, a sports team especially a high profile team such as hockey that brings in a, it's a spectator sport that brings visibility to our community and that is very important that we do not lose that you know it's it's a culture here. We're a winter sport uh, town. And without a division one college hockey team, I think it would be criminal. You know, I, I chose to donate for some pretty similar reasons as crafty. I mean, I, I believe in paying it forward and I, and I also believe in, in giving back. And you know, I was, I was incredibly fortunate to have received a, a scholarship to a division one hockey school when there was no other division one teams that were really willing to take a chance with me. Here's, you know, a California boy that they're going to give a, a full ride scholarship to. So I was, you know, at the time, obviously my parents were super excited for me just to have the opportunity, but also that something they didn't have to participate in paying for. And so looking back, you know, what an amazing time in my life. Uh, the school took a chance on me and, and, uh, and I did, I, you know, I, I worked hard as a student, I worked hard as a hockey player and, and yeah, I got a lot of amazing benefits out of it. And now I'm in a position where I can, I can participate, you know, financially, uh, and give back. And, and I also wanted to do it because I wanted to make a statement, you know, as crafty did too, 
we cherish that time and we want everybody to know that we cherish that time. If we weren't giving back, how you wouldn't know that. And so hopefully that lights a fire under other alumni, whether they're athletes uh, or not, to help participate in this as well. Uh, like Crafty said, we've, you know, we've done a matching challenge. And so, you know, we're going to match dollar for dollar um, up to 50 grand. And uh, we want to, we want to see people participating. And so, yeah, that's really the, you know, the main reason is just truly giving back to the organization. And I want to see it. I want to see it survive. We all want to see it survive. And so, you know, making that contribution uh, is hopefully, you know, one step in the right direction. And I know we're, we're getting really close to making it all happen. Lastly, what are your hopes for Seawolf Hockey going forward? My perspective, I would like to see it get on solid ground, and I'd like to see the legislator and the Board of Regents understand the importance of keeping a strong athletic program intact at the University of Alaska Anchorage. Do I hope they win a national championship? Absolutely. But the, the long game is that we have a program that we know is going to be here and it's not going to be threatened. Yeah, I mean, simply stated, I, I hope that, um, you know, this raise of the $3 million demonstrates to the state what, you know, the importance and how many people want to see, you know, this, this program back. Really the hope, obviously, to get the program back, you know, intact and, and moving forward and not having these types of things, you know, come up in the future. But I also think, you know, how incredibly important it is for the community in terms of, you know, the youth uh, in sports, the youth in hockey. Um, it's such a big, you know, hockey town. And without having, you know, the, the college players there, I think that's, it's going to hurt, hurt the young hockey players in, in the city. And, and um, I just hate to see that, hate to see that happen. And so even just for that sake alone, Having, having the hockey program there is, uh, you know, huge for me. Brian and Steve, again, it was such a pleasure to have you both on the podcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thanks for having me, Matt. And uh, Bogues, thanks for the idea of us doing it together. I love you, and I, I love all the guys that are on our team, man. And it's uh, not to get too sentimental here, but it, it's uh, it was definitely special. Thanks for having me and, and yeah, crafty same. Like I'm so glad we got to do it this way. It's great to see your face and hear your voice. And let's uh, let's get to the three million dollar mark. Seawolf Voices is a production of the University of Alaska Anchorage Office of Advancement and Alumni Relations. Thank you.